Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. And with the end of the granny event, I wanted to basically make this video as kind of a, you know, what to do next. You know, the event has just ended. What should I, what should I be doing next? And how should I prepare? And I actually wanted to make a video that um, specifically is going to be like a spoiler video similar to the one I made before the granny event launched. And I wanted to do that for chapter five before it comes out or actually like maybe when it comes out um, how to prepare for it I think I will do that very very soon but before I want to do that I actually want to basically kind of I guess the main purpose of this video is to kind of sell you on the importance of of maximizing your base okay i'm i'm mainly gonna sell you on the importance of maximizing your base that's that's the main purpose of this video and afterwards i want to show you some units that i've raised on both my accounts to basically help work in my base and get the most amount of resources possible so i think uh you know uh, something that um, a lot of players have been doing when they're you know when when they're playing Arcanites now is they're trying to E2 a lot of their units. They're trying to get their, a lot of their units to Elite 2 as fast as possible. You know, just kind of show everybody, hey, I got a whole bunch of E2 units. Um, actually, on my main account, I only have <laughs> I only have four E2s. Um, I have two six stars that are E2s, one five star and one four star. And the funny thing is on my alt account, I actually have more E2s. But it's mainly because on my ult, I only use I only use four stars, as you can see over here. But the thing is, um, the thing to know about this is, on both my accounts. Now, there's no way I can prove this, so you're, you're gonna have to take my word for it. But on both my accounts, basically after the first week of playing, after I got my entire team, like the main team that I'm using, most of the main units that I'm using to elite one, I completely stopped farming XP on all of them so um you know the xp stage the ls stages i completely stopped farming it and i have not touched that stage for a very very long time any of the ls stages i've not touched them for a very very long time um ever since the beginning of the game my ult started a week late and basically after um just a few days of playing i completely stopped touching the the ls stages because i know I can get a lot of XP just from base, just from passively. Um, I can get a lot of XP for my units passively without farming for them. And I can save my sanity to basically farm um, farm LMD or farm the materials that are required to get my units to E2. So um, this this account you can see over here, you know, basically I have a whole bunch of E2s. Um, they're, they're, this account only uses four stars, so it's a lot easier to, to get my units to E2. And I also farmed out the event quite a lot. You can see over here um, on this account, I even have enough to raise all of my, all the four star units in the game to, to uh, you know, max their skills and everything. I, basically I have enough coals and grindstones for for all the four stars in the game um, and on my main i have farmed the granny event even more and i basically have enough for most of the units that i'll raise as you can see um, the amount of coals and grindstones i have on my on my main account and i was still able you know during basically during the the whole time that i was farming i was still able to um, raise the level of a lot of my units um, a lot of them you can see it, they're actually already max level and they're ready to to like you know for me to get them to e2 so i basically i just want to kind of share the importance of uh, maximizing your base because your base is a huge income of um, experience for for your units essentially so it's and it's it comes like 100 percent passive all you have to do is put put units in the base to work and the way that i did this was i actually raised a lot of units that have a lot of very good base skills in order to basically put them to work in my base and i'm actually going to show you these units right now and this is actually very very important and it doesn't cost you a lot of resources to do so um, the first thing you want to do is like if you haven't done so now it's a very very good idea to start upgrading your base and basically get your base to basically maximum capacity 
try as hard as possible to maximize it as much as possible. And this also includes the dormitories as well. Um, I, you really should not be neglecting the dormitory because it's also a huge, um, huge boost of passive income in, in terms of credits. The, when you have max out dorms, you actually get more credits than people that don't have max out dorms. So basically every single day, I'm getting you know one or two materials more than the average player who hasn't really been maximizing. Um, and it's basically completely free. So that's there's no reason for you not to do it. And I think there's a lot of time before chapter five actually comes out for you to be able to raise some of these units. And by doing this, you actually, for the long term, you're gonna be able to raise more units to help you do you know more difficult stages in the game. So this is, think of it as an investment right now. You're basically, what you're doing now is you're just investing into your base and then it's gonna slowly generate like passive income for you, essentially. So that's, that's, um, that's me selling you on the importance of the base. And um, now I'm gonna kind of get into how exactly to, to maximize it. Now, for base, there's multiple setups. There's the one, five, three, the, you know, this is kind of getting into uh, really specific calculations. The one, five, three, the two, four, three, the two, five, two, um, you know, there's some people that do two, two, five, two. I think those three are like the main ones. And there's people that like swap between two bases, but that's like a little bit too complicated. So we're, we're mainly going to be talking about the, um, the two setups that I sh actually have here on my two accounts. The one five three and the um, two two four three. So two four three means two training posts, two four factories, and three power plants. And the the um, advantage of two four three is it actually this produces the most amount of like just raw resources um, in terms of like a balance of LMD and XP tickets. And this is the setup that I had for my, my ult the entire time. And because this ult, you know, doesn't refresh every single day, can't farm, um, basically, you know, ever since I ran out of Originite on this account, I wasn't able to refresh every single day. And it's basically just been, you know, going on passively. And I was still able to raise all those units to E2 with just the XP tickets from my base and from daily missions, you know, basically all from passive means. So um, this this setup is actually um, basically like, I'm not gonna, I, I don't, I, like, I'm, I'm gonna have to be honest, I didn't do the exact math, but this setup in general, I, and I probably like most people aren't gonna be that interested in the exact math, but this setup is most um, easiest to manage because you don't need to, have a lot of units that like specifically have factory skills uh, because if you go with the 153 setup you'll have a lot of units that have a um, that have trading post skills but aren't being utilized essentially so to use the 153 setup it actually requires you to have more units and basically invest more in raising those units in order for it to be effective at the same time the 153 setup also requires you to um, have like pretty much max out dormitories to really utilize it because you want to the reason why you want to have the, these max out dormitories is because of the limited amount of units that specifically have factory skills you want to be be keeping them in the factory for as long as humanly possible so that's why when you you know when you rest those units um, when you have better dormitories you can rest those units faster you know rest them for five hours and then put them right back um like a, i think a a normal like 1000 ambience dormitory it takes like 12 hours for your units to restore like fully restore morale but a 5000 um, ambience dormitory only takes five five hours for it for it to completely restore morale so because of that um you can actually utilize the units that are basically the best for certain roles inside your base. Okay. So um, to kind of make this like as easy as possible for you, if you're refreshing a lot every single day, um, then I would recommend you just go one, five, three. Like, you know, if you're farming um, a lot of LMD with your originite, then you can definitely go one, five, three. Um, if you're just using 
like the passive sanity that the game gives you then um, I would recommend you go with the two two uh, the two four three because my basically I only farm gold a little bit sometimes on this account or, or LMD a little bit sometimes on this account and um, basically most of the LMD that I get is passive as well as the XP that I get is also passive so um, it's a good way to basically just have this passive source of um, of resources to help you raise your units and you can use your sanity on the stuff that you can't get passively like the materials right so this is a good idea if you're um, if you're not if you're not refreshing every day and you're only just using the passive sanity from the game you can and you can still do a lot with it so it's very very important that you have your bases maxed out um, basically what the the way you want to max your base is you want to raise your um, it, the the stuff over here first before you really work on the other ones because although the other ones give you some some passive stuff it doesn't really um, it doesn't contribute to you to your income and in the beginning you all you can just micromanage a little bit harder to kind of um, combat the not having like as good dorms to rest up your units you just micromanage your base a little bit harder to maximize the uptown uptime of the really good units for their specific roles in the base um, but after that you basically what you want to do is you want to max you want to max out your dorms as fast as you possibly can as well so um, on both my accounts i maxed i basically what i did is i never let the drones go to waste okay i basically i never let the drones go to waste and every time um every time the supply missions are up i would farm those first i would make that a priority so every time the drone is refreshing i would be upgrading my base okay and that's basically how i played like my drones have never maxed out on this account either so i see a lot of like players they, they have their drones maxed out and um it's basically just going to waste and i mean some people they use their drones to um, speed up the process of your of like your production in your factory or trading post ba the the reason you want to use your drones to max out your base first is because once you max it out then you're getting all the all these extra resources passively and then afterwards you can use your drones for um, to to basically dump back into your factory afterwards so the way you want to do it is you want to farm this with supply missions as much as possible to max out your base and um, once you have that down you can basically like uh, once you have these these ones down um, you can start using your drones to um, to to feed back into like the factory the trading post to produce more resources for you um, the the way that you want to upgrade your dorms is by the amount of furniture that you have so if you don't have enough furniture to increase the ambience of your dorm like if you don't have enough furniture parts i'll actually go into it to explain it a little bit better if you don't have enough furniture to increase the ambience of your dorms to completely max them out um to to whatever level they have then you don't need to actually um, upgrade your dorms then until you have enough furniture parts so say for example right now your my base is rank five right now all my bases are rank five but say at rank five it's five thousand ambient so every rank increases the ambience by one thousand so if it's at rank four and it's only at four thousand ambience and you only have enough furniture for four thousand ambience there's no reason for you to upgrade to the next the next tier um you can use those drones first to to increase the xp of your or or the lmd depending on you know which whichever one you're short um, and then afterwards when you have no furniture parts you can use them use them to like once you have no furniture parts you can use the drones to upgrade the um, your dormitory and a good strategy to max out the ambience of your dormitory if you want to see it over here is just stuff it with clocks and stuff on the wall so if you look at my decoration mode um, I have like all these lights, you know, above, and I use a lot of like clocks and um, lights, wall lights, 
because they only take up four squares. So it's very, very easy to arrange them. Um, and also buy a lot of chairs because chairs also only take up four squares. So I use a lot of chairs and I just stuff the, the whole entire room full until it's 5,000 ambience. Um, this one's not even the scariest one. The scariest one is on my main account. This this one over here. This this is a this is an absolute absolute clusterfuck. <laughs> oh my god. But you want to the you want to do this because this allows you to maximize your units and basically raise them raise them faster or or um, have them ready faster so you can dump them back into your trading post and your factory. And the units that you actually want to raise um, are the ones that have mostly factory skills and trading post skills. Um, power plant skills, there's only around five units. I actually have a, um, a Reddit post that I saw. Um, someone actually linked me earlier today. And this Reddit post over here, it actually shows pretty much all the um, it's by ha 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 I'm Tommy and it basically shows all the best in slot units for your base and I'll actually include this in the the link below because I think this basically just like explains it super super well of what units you actually should have so anything that's like over here you definitely want to raise um, if you have the exu the exu Laplin and um, Texas combo if you ever, if you saw my um, summoning video when I first got Laughlin, this was why I was so hyped because this combo is like the best in base. It, um, they, they don't get tired very fast, and they um, increase like the trading post by a hundred percent, like all together. So it's like the best combo if you have this in your trading post. Um, but other units that you want to raise are a lot of three stars and four stars. So we're actually going to take a look back at um, back back to this scene, and we're actually take a look at the. Um, I should actually I should show this on my main account. Yes, I should definitely show this on my main account. So um, the units that you want to raise first are the ones that are cheapest, and the cheapest ones for your base are the three stars. Um, some of these three stars actually have some very very good skills. If I remember correctly, Yato is definitely the best one because Yato actually has a factory skill. Um, and a trading post skill. If I remember correctly, Yato has both a factory and a trading post skill. And I should probably show this inside the base because it'll be probably be easier to see inside the base. So the units that you want to raise first are the three stars. And the three stars that you want to raise are the ones that um, increase their increase the fact either the factory or the trading post skill first because those are the most important skills. So if you take a look at Yato, I'll actually find Yato over here. Yato is probably de definitely like number one. If you don't have a level thirty Yato, just like dump some XP tickets into it. So, you can see over here, Yato has both a 30% trading post skill and once um, already, and then if you need, if you're running like a 1-5-3 one, one, um, setup, then it's it's very, very crucial that you have your Yato at level 30 because um, she also gets a factory skill, a 15% factory skill. It's not very huge, but you know, you basically, you want to use every single factory skill that's possible in the game. So having Yato level 30 is like extremely, extremely huge. Um, uh, there's a lot of other ones for three stars. Um, the order that you want to go is basically factory first if you're running the 153, and then you can value factory and trading post equally if you're running if you're running to um, 243. And afterwards, the skills that you want to value are mostly um, either clue search, power plant, or um, or the sleep skills, the ones that are like for rest, for dormitory rest, because there's not enough units for you to always be using, like there's not enough factory units for you to always be using a factory unit in the factory. So when you're not using a, a factory unit in the factory, the next best thing is actually to use a, a um, unit that has the, some sort of dormitory skill, because the ones with the dormitory skills, uh, when you put them in with other units, so say for example you're using a unit with a dormitory skill and then you're you have a whole bunch of other units that with like factory or trading post skills 
um, when you're resting them up, if you have one of these units also resting as well, then it actually increases the, the morale gain of all the units that are inside that dormitory. So it increases the speed of regeneration for all those units, and then you can actually take them out faster if you want to micromanage even harder. So that's why um, the, the dormitory skills are actually very highly valued as well. And that's also why I, um, I raised like Durin to level 30. She gets like a better dormitory skill at level 30. Uh, there's a lot of very good units with very good dormitory skills. And the ones that have like both um, a factory skill and a dormitory skill, you definitely want to use them. Or both a training post skill and a, and a dormitory skill. Or a dormitory skill and a power plant skill. Um, you definitely want to raise them to 30. So all your level ones just... I mean, two star units and one star units, you want to raise them to, to 30 because all of them basically have some sort of um, very useful skill. So it's very, very, it's a very good idea to do that. And afterwards, you want to raise your, um, raise all your three stars to E1. And there's a few exceptions of three stars that you don't want to raise to E1. You don't need to raise to E1. And the ones that you don't need to raise to E1 are the ones that have workshop skills because workshop skills there's a limit of like stuff you can do in the workshop like there's a limit of stuff you can process in the workshop because you actually it actually requires you to have raw materials so there's really no use for you to have multiple operators with workshop skills you really only need one that's like the best one and that's basically it so Operators that get a workshop skill, like when you E2 them or E1 them, you really don't need to raise them to E1. And those are like basically um, Hibiscus and Adnacule. These are the two that you don't need to raise to E1. But everybody else has some sort of valuable skill. So you definitely want to raise all the other ones to um, E1. And Plume... Wait, why didn't I raise Plume? What does Plume get at E1? I don't even know what Plume gets at E1. I think it was a factory skill or something, and that's why I didn't do it. I think so. I, I could be wrong. I'm gonna have to look it up afterwards. Um, but basically, these these two are the only really the only ones you don't want to um, raise to raise to E1, and possibly Plume. I'm, I'm gonna have to look it up afterwards. You're you're gonna have to look it up afterwards too at what Plume does. Um, and. After that, the other ones that um, are very key, there's a few four stars that are very key that you want to raise to um, E1 as fast as possible as well for their base skills. And that's, um, that's Shaw, Frostleaf, and Gravel. You can see over here that I have them at um, E1. And Gravel has like, Gravel has one of the best factory skills. I think it's like um, the money skill, but it's 35% increase. So that's like, I think that's like the highest. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I think that might be the highest. Um, and Shaw gets a power plant skill, which is really nice because there's not a lot of power plant units. I think there's only five in the game, so it's very very hard to get power plant units. So definitely um, raise Shaw to to E1 as well, so you can have an extra unit in the power plant. When you have an extra, when you have a power plant unit in the power plant, it actually increases the drones produced by your base. So that actually um, increases the so you can use those drones to increase more to make more XP tickets and get more XP tickets overall. So that's why um, that's why the factories or the power plant skills are also very very important. Man, I'm like thinking I'm thinking too fast and like not talking fast enough. <laughs> that's that's the main issue. That's that's the main issue. That's why I'm like stuttering like crazy. Um, there's there's a few really good ones, but most of the other four stars are like units you would raise anyways. Jitano has the best um, best uh, clue search skill, and Shiryuki also has a um, one of the better, not the best, but one of the better um, the factory skills as well for for making. I'm not sure if it was XP or or money, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think Haze. Oh no, it was for XP for Shiryuki. Um, the other one is Vigna. Vigna also has a, a XP skill, XP ticket skill. So these are like super, super key because you're using the factories to make XP tickets. So like Shiryuki, Vigna um, are are huge, are really, really huge. Um, and also Frostleaf as well. Frostleaf also has the other XP skill. It's like very, very huge. 
Um, and the other ones are gold skills. You can use them to create, basically create gold bars faster, and that's like gravel and um, and haze. Haze also has one of the best in the game as well. I can't find haze. Oh shit! I, I think I didn't raise haze on my main. Oh my god. Oh no, haze already has it. What does haze get when when you get her to to E one? But I don't remember all of them exactly, which is why I'm going to link the um, the Reddit post down below so you can actually take a look at them in detail because for me to like explain every single unit like in this video is just going to be impossible. So I'll give you like a few good ones like, you know, like Gravel and Haze and um, not Haze, um, Gravel and Frostleaf and like Vigna and Shiryuki. Those are like super, super key. Um, but besides that, you, it, you can raise them depending on, you know, depending on if, if you want to raise them. Um, after you get the ones with like factory and training post skills maxed out, um, training post, you're, you might not be like that worried because if you're, if you're running a 1-5-3, you might not, not be that worried. But if you're running a 2-3, uh, 2-4-3, then you definitely also want to ver very highly value operators that also get um, training post skills as well but training post is very easy to get there's a whole bunch of units that already have like 30 percent training post um so that just e1 so training post is a lot more a lot easier but factory skills are super super valuable besides that um afterwards after you max out like training post and factory skills you want to look for units that have both um, a sleep skill and a factory skill and there's a lot of there's a few of them. Um, I think like moose um, uh, I can't I, I really can't name all of them off, off the top of my head But if you take a look at the the spreadsheet below you can look up those units that are like best in slot and see if any of their skills you are only unlocked when you e1 or e2 them and then just do it accordingly. Okay, so that's why I'll include that in the link below. Uh, but besides that, that's that's pretty much it of the units that you you want to raise in order to maximize efficiency in your base. The other thing I also wanted to point out is um, is credits and having a max like having max out dormitories. I briefly mentioned this increases your credit gain. So when you can. You want to stuff your dormitory full of furniture so you can get every single room to 5k ambience in it and there's a lot of ways to do this but the easiest strategy i found is literally clocks and chairs just clocks and chairs in every room as you can see <laughs> clocks and chairs in every room that's the uh that's the easy way to do it um, if you want to decorate your dorms, you know, feel free to do so. But if you're a tryhard like me, then um, then this is pretty much you, what you have to do. Okay, this is pretty much what you have to do if you're a tryhard like me. But besides that, that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to need to know. Um, I'll include a you know I'll include the link down below, and then. You can also look up the operators that are all, all on the on that uh, on that screenshot on that picture, and look up and see which one of their skills are unlocked at E1, and basically just do that accordingly. So that's pretty much it. Um, I just wanted to give a few pointers about how to maximize your base um, most efficiently and produce the most amount of resources possible, so you can. You know raise all of your units all of your waifus and get the most out of, out of this game without wasting a whole bunch of sanity farming lmd and farming xp tickets because ha not having your base like you know maximize is actually hurting you quite a lot you're missing out on, on a whole bunch of passive income that you should be getting um as a as a player playing this game and if you're wasting your sanity farming the XP and farming a whole bunch of like LMD as well, then you won't have enough sanity to farm your materials unless you're a whale, right? <laughs> so that's um, that's pretty much it. And I mean, you kind of get the perspective on, on like both my accounts. My my main account is the one that refreshes every single day. My um, alt account is the one that doesn't refresh but in terms of progression you can see that they're actually not that far apart 
Uh, so, and that the main reason for that is because the base actually, you know, con contributes to a whole bunch of resources that you're supposed to have, which is why it's very, very important that you put a lot of emphasis on it and not to neglect it. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. On the next video, I'm going to actually um, kind of do a spoiler video as I did before for the granny event. So, you know, if you're afraid of spoilers, don't watch that. But if, that, if that's something you want to see um, of the future maps and how to prepare for them. And also kind of basically the two things I'm going to talk about is like, you know, two of the maps that you really have to watch out for and the units that you want to raise in order to be ready once chapter five comes out to, um, you know, so, so you can clear like, cause ch when chapter five comes out, Annihilation three, when the second part of chapter five comes out, Annihilation three will also come out and you want to clear Anni Annihilation three, like on the first week that it releases. Cause if you don't, then you don't get the maximum amount of Orondoms, which is just, you know, resources wasted. I, I, essentially again so I'll, I'll be talking about some key units to raise for um annihilation 3 in general and all or, in or annihilation 3 specifically and chapter 5 in general to help you um you know get get prepared for it because i think you'll start speeding up the process um with the with the banners and they're like swapping banners so you, you don't know what's going on and they might be releasing the chen banner so when chen ba banner drops then chapter 5 is like you know probably coming out and then followed by that annihilation 3 is going to be coming out very very soon so there's not a lot of time and if you're not careful with managing your resources if you're not, you're not maximizing your resources you're going to get left behind by everybody else that is okay so that's why i decided to make a video like this and the next video will also be um talking about the the um the actual gameplay part of it and maximizing your resources there Anyways, that's pretty much it. So be sure to subscribe in order to catch that video if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.